Having been in Thailand since 2018, Ambassador Georg Schmidt and his wife have been enjoying life until COVID-19 disrupted some aspects of his work and personal life. I think for the life I can make a clear distinction life before COVID and after COVID. It made a huge change when, when it happened. Of course, it makes a big difference because the life of an ambassador, the life of a diplomat is all about going out, meeting people. It's not just reading documents at home. I could do that online from Germany, but I need to be out. I need to understand. I need to hear the sounds, the smells, the temperature in order to get a better feel of the country that I'm serving in. What I really enjoy in Bangkok is just walking around a lot. Sometimes I take my scooter. All these activities were scaled back because there was a recommendation to stay at home and avoid outside contact. But when that's possible again and when it was possible, I really enjoy walking the streets of Bangkok because there's so much you can see. Around every little corner there's a little surprise hidden. His Excellency relishes the diversity and richness in Thailand's culture and geography. There's, there's a good reason why so many people like coming here because it's like many countries and cultures packed into one. Um, you have the seaside, you have the mountains, uh, you can have endless kind of activities. What I find very impressive in Thailand is how Thailand has managed to put this together and accommodate it and sort of diverge it into something which is then unique again. The embassy was working hard to get not just German nationals back home during the pandemic, but also people of other nationalities stranded in Thailand. The ambassador also talked about the embassy's work in getting Germans and other non-Thais vaccinated. So I remember when the crisis began, we had to develop all these mechanisms very quickly. And at the same time, we still had thousands of tourists who were stranded here because one airline after the other just canceled its flights. So we had people ringing us up and say, look, I need to go home, but I can't. And fortunately, we managed to bring back about 3,000 people who were stranded here um, with uh, 13 charter flights from Bangkok and Phuket. So we had teams at the airports um, and we helped people to go back home. Our main part here was to inform and also to have many, many talks with the Thai government about vaccination of non-Thai citizens, but who are residents of Thailand. And what we did in Germany is we took the decision to vaccinate everybody who is in Germany. And what we advocated for strongly together with other embassies here is that the Thai government does the same. What we advocated for is to treat foreign residents in Thailand the same way as Thais. That means give them vaccination according to the age, medical risk groups, etc. And I think we're now in a good way. There is a website that's coming up. 60,000 people had registered and roughly 30,000 had received the vaccines. As for bilateral relations, Germany is focusing its cooperation with Thailand on climate change, among other things. We're Thailand's largest partner in climate change cooperation. And Thailand is very vulnerable if you actually see climate change happening. I mean, I once saw a map that said if flooding occurs, rising of sea levels uh, occurs in the way that's predicted, then part of this uh, garden would be underwater now. This is not going to go away just because of the pandemic. Exchanging ideas is not as if we, we could say, oh, this is how you should do it, but we're offering the German experience. And I think Germany and Thailand share a lot. We're both highly industrialized countries. And if we can manage to show that you can be an industrialized country, successful, and at the same time, resource efficient and sustainable, I think that sets a strong example in our regions and worldwide. Germany, like some other like-minded European countries with embassies in Bangkok, has been quite active in its advocacy for human rights and has found itself, at times, drawn into Thai politics, with different groups of protesters appealing their cases to the country. Germany has experienced two dictatorships and uh, with, with terrible, terrible damages to us, ourselves as a country, but also to our neighbors. And uh, I think the whole, if you look at the history of the United Nations and how the UN Declaration on Human Rights came into being, it's so much linked to what happened in the Second World War. So one thing is a German particular sensitivity. We think that the human rights and 
human rights cover a whole broad, broad range of things are so important to, to citizens in our countries. People should have the security that their freedoms and their individual rights balanced against the individual rights of others are protected by the state. Thailand, like Germany, has international commitments. So it's not the traditional thing that like, oh, stay out, human rights is just our internal business. The, we, we have commitments, global commitments, and we need to fulfill them. Germany as much as Thailand. We said clearly that uh, the embassy recognize, or we recognize the right for peaceful demonstration and the stresses here on peaceful. And uh, we gave clear signals last year in October that we are ready to receive whatever petition is handed us to us. Um, we did not make any comments on it uh, because that's a Thai domestic issue, but we receive opinions and we pass them on to Berlin, definitely. With Germany's Unity Day coming up on October 3rd, just like other embassies, big gatherings cannot be held this year. In the National Day, I think it's a sort a good way to reflect for us, like where do we stand in our relationship and where do we go forward? Apart from German icons like beer, cars, schnitzels, castles and football, the ambassador also highlighted the not-so-famous with diverse backgrounds and different ways of doing things that made those successes possible. In the economic sense, we have a lot of what we call hidden champions, is the companies that are behind the BMW, that are behind the Mercedes. There are countless small companies. Behind it, there are smaller family structures. To me, that is one of the strong points of Germany. Um, it's normal to disagree, but we have to agree how to disagree. Hatay Deshikitiranan reporting for Thai PBS World.